Hi everyone and welcome back, this is Sky coming on to talk to you about the full moon in Pisces happening on September 10th, 2022. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about some of the intuitive messages I'm getting about this full moon and about the uh, lunar cycles that are coming on. Um, so I have a lot to talk about with this full moon because uh, we are getting closer and closer to a really intense eclipse season happening during Scorpio season in uh, November. Um, so we've still got quite a bit of time before that and I want to dedicate some uh, space in this video to uh, preparing you all for that time so we can really be uh, generating a longer term momentum to uh, help that time go a little bit more smoothly. And of course, I'm going to be speaking about uh, just the full moon in Pisces and the uh, September uh, energy as well. Um, so yeah, uh, first of all, I just feel that we are moving into a for some people hard, for some people easy time of relief. Okay, so relief was the key word that I was getting when I was um, meditating about this full moon. Uh, I felt that there are a lot of uh, reductions happening of difficult stories. I felt that uh, the harsh reality or the existential crisis or the identity crisis really starts to get subdued by this energy. And we start to come into a greater... Uh, viewpoint of ourselves and the wider momentum that we're creating. So there has been a lot of uh, blind spot energy coming up over the last uh, few years, actually, for people relating to their longer term momentum. It's been really difficult for people to zoom out and see the bigger picture. Well, uh, the full moon in Pisces every year uh, during September serves as a wonderful time to uh, get out of the uh, micro focus and to really see the bigger picture. The sign of Pisces is ruled by Neptune. It is the ruler of the uh, natal 12th house. And uh, this means that it has the um, widest, most all-encompassing perspective. There's a very omniscient energy with the full moon in Pisces. And uh, the full moon, of course, has a rulership over um, emotions revealed, uh, truth seen in its uh, most pure form. And for that reason, the full moon can be, um, you know, hard for people because it's very much revealing emotional realities. And it also can um, be very beautiful, right? I mean, of course, the full moon is, uh, it really lights up the night. So there's a, a beautiful energy there. So I think the full moon in Pisces is one of the most uh, beautiful, artistic, and surreal moons of the year. Uh, it's one of the reasons why September is one of my favorite months, uh, because the full moon in Pisces is uh, energy that I really enjoy as a Scorpio myself and as someone who does this kind of intuitive work. It's a great, great period of time, you know, sun in Virgo, full moon in Pisces, to have that uh, combination between the detail-oriented, realistic, and material... Um, uh, positive energy of Virgo alongside the emotionally intelligent, uh, dream-oriented part of Pisces. Um, so that is what this period of time is about. It's about the uh, merging of the realistic material reality with the dream, okay, with the uh, dream space, with the uh, void, with the uh, greater emotional truth, okay? So I feel... Uh, first of all, just talking about September before we get into the longer time period, I feel here in September, especially like September 10th to September 15th, we have to really open up that space for ourselves to allow our dream to be uh, processed by the material reality. So getting less separation between the material, between the day-to-day -day grind, and then the bigger goal, the bigger aspiration, or the uh, larger expanse of our own potential. I feel that a lot of people are really suffering right now from a harsh separation between the daily grind and the bigger goal or the bigger purpose that they feel. And as that line between those two things becomes more rigid, more material, more real, uh, that increases the feeling of existentialism, that increases the feeling of... Um, uh, for some people, hopelessness. So there's kind of a, a battle right now, especially as we build up to the Saturn-Uranus square in October, um, then the eclipses, right? Uh, you can kind of see the picture that's happening here. There's this uh, really strong catalyst turning point uh, that will be represented, I think, by the eclipses, but it can be happening anytime between now and November. Um, you know, it, it's a very interesting chronology that we're moving into here. There's a very... Um, 
it's different for different people and it's hard to articulate. It's like some people are just going to be breaking the boundaries. Okay, some people are just going to be like, I can't have this separation anymore between what I feel for myself and what I see for myself versus what I'm living. As I feel that that separation for quite a while, especially during the triple Capricorn conjunction in 2020, I feel that that was comforting for some people, like sitting with the dream, but not realizing it yet, uh, not having to risk the liability of the dream, not having to risk messing it up, but like having it. I feel that was a source of comfort for a lot of people for a very long time. But now, as we move up through the ending point of 2022, this starts to become more of a threat to people, or I feel that people start to feel more um, like, uh oh, where's the time going? Uh, you know, am I becoming sort of someone who's like living in their head or living in a time space that's not really connected to now? That becomes a major, um, I think, collective theme right now. But there's a very good opportunity for healing it and for starting to materialize a path whereby we can uh, soften the line between daily grind and the line between uh, the dream. And I just love the energy of that. I really support that. Um, and I'm, I just really have to say uh, gratitude as well for the full moon and Pisces energy. It's, it's a very much easier time for me to um, speak about these collective themes and to speak about uh, these emotional uh, progresses because it just really kind of opens or um, thins that veil a little bit more. Um, and that's another likelihood with the full moon in Pisces is a thinner veil. Uh, you could have more psychic activation, more intuitive feelings, more empathy as well. I think there is going to be a rise in empathy uh, between this full moon and then uh, Scorpio season. I feel that empathy has been collectively very low. I think people have been really obsessed with like a money, materialism, uh, goal progress, and uh, status-oriented things with the North Node in Taurus, and of course we had that Uranus-Mars uh, North Node conjunction over the summer, as well as Saturn in Aquarius and the Supermoon in Aquarius that happened. It's very detached from empathy, and it's very detached from emotional considerations. It's much more connected to, um, on one hand, professional networks, and then on the other hand, like money and materialism. So I do feel that we have maybe a crisis of um, an overfocus on professional issues, on money issues, and a lot of people's like personal lives could be in tatters because of that. And uh, then they have to start having experiences maybe where they see that these like professional considerations or these material considerations actually like outlive them or outlive their um, life force contribution. So that's not always a bad thing. I mean, that's like legacy stuff, right? Like you create something that's like bigger than you or you create something that, um, you know, is more than just you. Uh, that's not a bad thing. But I think the full moon in Pisces really does remind people of um, of the mortality of certain experiences. Again, Pisces rule has rulership over the ending, the true endings. Um, so we have to kind of think about, okay, this thing that I'm contributing to or this big purpose life goal, it's beautiful maybe from a legacy perspective, but also how can I balance it? with uh, things that are meaningful for myself now. Um, and to get more specific with this and less uh, general, um, this is really going to be targeting the Ten of Wands energy we've been talking about for a long time, you know, the factory experience, the uh, never-ending productivity, the um, constant investment of life force energy into things that maybe really aren't ours or things that aren't perhaps uh, tied to us. So I, I want to really bring your attention to that uh, as we're moving up to this full moon in Pisces, like a, where is the overworking happening? Where is the workaholism? Where is the hyper productivity? Uh, if you resonate with any of that, this is going to be a really good time to um, find a solution and to also uh, start to invest more in uh, things that have real significance and real meaning for you. As I feel that to be the main, the main um, thread between now, honestly, and, and the end of this year is. Um, replacements, adjustments, uh, reappropriating uh, certain adjust certain investments of time and uh, change, changing that up a little bit. So um, any changes that you might need to make there, you might have the best feeling about it now with the full moon in Pisces. You might have the best um, sort of gut feeling or intuition about uh, how maybe time could be invested, about what you want your time to go to, and then the uh, opposition of the Sun in Virgo, also the Mercury retrograde in Virgo, Venus in Virgo, that is going to really allow it to be realistic too. So not just a pipe dream, okay, not just a 
an escapist fantasy, okay? But a realistic uh, change in the investment of time is a really important thing to consider here, okay? Um, okay, uh, another message about this full moon in Pisces, and that, again, this is just really uh, happening in September. Okay, I feel that we have to have more faith and confidence in ourselves. Um, I think that a lot of people are kind of worried about what's around the corner, or there's a feeling of like being in the wrong territory or being um, not as strong as we are. Like maybe a, um, for some people it's more rational than others, but for some people there's a kind of very irrational feeling to me of like uh, not being able to get through something, not being able to step up to the plate, not being able to uh, even allow oneself to feel like they've done things correctly. There's this kind of insecurity, right? Pisces can can represent this. It's like, oh my gosh, I haven't done things properly. Oh my gosh, I'm not in the place I should be. I'm not um, the best version of myself. And there's this kind of like um, slouched feeling or this feeling of like, oh, it's it's uh, things haven't been done properly. And, and it's kind of like a meek and um, not, not meek. Meek isn't the right word. It's more like um, fearful, okay? Um, if you resonate with that at all, uh, this is going to be an important time to wash some of that away. And also, like, to really understand why you feel that way. Like, what you did, or what you were involved in, or what you connected to. Uh, what the catalysts of these feelings, what triggered these feelings. Um, and then from there, once you identify those catalyst uh, things for these feelings, once you identify those, you can actually understand if this is rational or not. Um, and then also the subsequent changes or not that might need to be... Um, imposed based on uh, your feelings. So um, on one hand, we don't need to discount our feelings and we need to take it really seriously. But um, th this is a kind of a gray zone for me as well, where it's like, okay, what if this isn't like uh, really that big of a deal? What if we're maybe um, intensifying these negative feelings and it's really not that big of a deal and it's really like um, not a threat at all? Okay, we have to really measure that up and understand I also think that uh, this full moon in Pisces will trigger up a little bit more of a collectivism. I think that uh, people will want to team up together after this time. I think a lot of people are tired of the um, existential sense of individualism. I think that a lot of people are getting very exhausted by having too much on their own plate. So there's a feeling of a helping hand and also a feeling of uh, growing relationships through um, a group of people or a team working on one project together. So if you are someone who does too much on your own, this is going to be a nice period of time <laughs> to probably have a really hard time with that with the Mercury retrograde in Virgo and to understand intuitively through that um, difficulty how like a greater group project or team environment might uh, work a lot better. And then for those of you who've already kind of uh, done that or who have already started to put a team together or have uh, been working more with others, I think that there will be rewards uh, during this full moon uh, for that, like a growing relationships with people, having a stronger um, feeling, ooh, this is good, uh, feeling reinforced at a level of self because other people are supporting you and there's a consensus. I find that super independent people are the most self-doubting sometimes just because they don't have that teamwork sense of consensus or they don't have that like backing uh, or that reaffirmation of their um, of their legitimacy or of their security or well-being. Okay, so it takes a really formidable person to have independence or to do that, and, and for everyone it can be difficult. Um, but there is just something about independence versus teamwork versus uh, collective goals versus um, even family uh, projects, okay? Uh, that point from where we decide to do something totally on our own compared to when we seek help, why or how we do something on our own or together with others, that's coming up for a, for a change here, I think perhaps new principles or new ethics regarding what we choose to take on alone and not, okay? Um, anyway, everyone, I want to move on a little bit uh, just from this full moon in Pisces and talk to you about uh, preparing for the uh, eclipse season. I'll probably talk about this again in the October uh, moon videos as well because I, I think that this is a really good way uh, to work on this because uh, eclipse season gets so crazy uh, every year. And I think uh, moving towards it in advance and thinking about it in advance is a good way to get some uh, good long-term momentum and preparation for it. Okay, so um, w another reason why I'm doing this is because the uh, eclipses are going to be happening in the uh, debilitated sign of a Scorpio and then in the exalted sign of Taurus. So it's going to be even more volatile than usual. 
Uh, so eclipse energy is always a volatile energy as it is, but because it's happening on both the exalted side of the moon uh, in Taurus and then the debilitated sign, sign of the moon, Scorpio, that's going to increase that feeling of volatility. So we want to really be prepared uh, for November. Um, and I'll try to uh, put the dates in the description box below of when the eclipses are so you can uh, have uh, access to prepare for that. Um, but I know that it's going to be happening in Scorpio season, and um, I do feel that there's a totally different turning point, or a total. There's a turning point that creates a totally different self relationship, and even different forms of self expression coming in. Um, and I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for uh, light bulb moments for people, uh, major aha moments, major even revelations coming in for people. Um, in November and even up through December and January. Um, so it's important to know that that's coming on. Um, and my recommendation is to um, try to p implement as many like healthy small habits as you can here in Virgo season um, and try to let this full moon in Pisces just be a um, maybe final point for certain bad habits or for certain things that you just know um, can't ever really be that great for you, but maybe have become a big crutch, okay? Um, Pisces is the sign of escapism. It's the sign of um, reliance as well. Um, so what are the uh, tools of escapism in your life? Can you start to uh, move away from those now um, as we will move, move into a very strong waning moon cycle after September 10th? And uh, that will lead up, um, you know, probably, I don't know exactly when the next new moon is, but probably around, uh, of course, the equinox, right, uh, should be around the time of the 21st of September, which I will be making a video about. Uh, be sure to subscribe uh, to get notified when that goes out. Um, you know, this equinox this year is going to uh, be very welcoming, very kind, very honest, very um, straightforward about the changes we need to make. Um, and it's going to be kind of like an embrace into the next phase, uh, assuming that we're willing to make a few changes or we're willing to um, have a healthier, more comfortable experience. Otherwise, I think the eclipse season in November can be very hard, okay? If we're not willing to maybe compromise here, or if we're not willing to do the safe, kind, loving action, okay? Um, there could be a big transformation in resources for people, a big transformation in resourcefulness as well, what we do, what we don't do, big shift in code of ethics coming at the individual level over the next few months. And that will probably be catalyzed in the November eclipses. So knowing that there might be a change in principle, knowing that there might be a change in expression, knowing that we need to really step away from any unhealthy habits that threaten that, what daily habits can you start implementing here during the full moon in Pisces? And leading up to the equinox to uh, guarantee a safer passage then okay so it does feel indicated to me that there is some type of major rite of passage coming up over the next six month uh, horizon in general it doesn't mean that it's happening right during the eclipses in scorpio season um, but there's some major life change or life threshold that's being crossed for uh, most people and to me that says that a lot of the comforts that we currently have or that we currently recognize as a certain, um, I don't know, filler to our experience right now or certain mechanisms that we've created to make things work now just may not resonate anymore after November because we are going to also be seeing that a lot of people in our own lives or a lot of the other people that we're relying on are having these big life-changing situations. So we might just not like have the same uh, structure anymore or we might not have the same values anymore and other people also won't have the same structures or values. So there's going to be a major uh, turning point and a major mix up for people and a major uh, rite of passage on the positive and then also conclusion for other people or um, even like a, for some people what might be considered a loss so that they can actually move into the territory they need to be in. So it's really good to size things up during the full moon in Pisces, uh, not from too emotional of a point of view, but from a more logical point of view. Uh, with the Virgo sun, um, you know, what aspects of your health, of your daily routines, of your um, life ethics and principles as well, do you feel are outdated or um, also unrealistic? Now what we can start doing between now and November is start replacing things or start um, allowing ourselves to 
have what we want and to live in the way that we want to live uh, through small actions now. And then by November, then by the eclipse season, it's going to be much more feasible to have that big change or to have a very refreshing rite of passage rather than a um, than a tough one. Again, six of wands versus six of swords energy. I keep seeing those two uh, card archetypes lately. Uh, so we have to choose which way we want that to go. You know, do we want that to be a very um, kind of uh, confident and uh, self-trusting process? Or do we want that to be more of a, uh, you know, tough or emotional or um, even hidden feeling of maybe getting out of there or moving into the next phase? Uh, one way or another, there's going to be a movement into the next phase that comes over the oncoming general time. And I think that journaling about, you know, what do I want to change in my life? What do I not want to change in my life? What do I need to conclude in my life? What do I need to graduate from? What do I need to um, also move into or um, apply for or connect with? All right. So we very much have a rewiring <laughs> coming in. Uh, we have a uh, unplugging of a certain energy connection and then a plugging back in of a different outlet or a different uh, connection uh, that's very represented by the current uranus and mercury retrogrades as well as the uh, saturn retrograde which will then go direct and move closer to pisces and the nodes moving further through taurus and scorpio and of course um, by this time next year being in libra and aries so there's going to be a lot of big changes in energy output and big changes in what result we want or what uh, greater picture, what greater um, life series we're generating is. Okay, so what is that? It's good to know what that is right now. It's also really nice to take off the blindfold and to not be um, kind of naive to your own creations right now as well. Like, uh, again, not being able to zoom out, not being able to see the bigger picture, and then just like putting one foot in front of the other is not the most is not the best way to do it right now because of the major energy that we have in the signs uh, Capricorn, Aquarius, and uh, Pisces, okay? Um, that means that things have to be very zoomed out, very macrocosmic, and very um, seamless when it comes to the bigger picture. Okay, once we get more in like Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, uh, in the younger signs of the Zodiac, it will switch back to a kind of like, a, you know, one step at a time, a smaller focus but as for right now and as for quite a quite a ways longer it's going to be a very uh, zoomed out focus so giving yourself the um, benefit of seeing that full picture of seeing the uh, greater narrative of what you're creating what you're participating in what you're uh, moving toward will be very helpful in understanding um, the oncoming rite of passage and anyway, everyone, I think I'm going to conclude the video on that note. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful. Um, do check out the description box below. Uh, I am on Patreon. This channel is made possible by uh, that uh, Patreon page, so definitely check that out if you would like to get uh, premium content. I do weekly forecasts every week, which are only available over there. Um, also, your likes, comments, and subscribes are a wonderful free way to support the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing um, and commenting. Let me know uh, how it resonated or any thoughts that you might have about this uh, transit. And um, yes, I will see you guys next week for another live premiere. I will talk to you soon. Have a great full moon in Pisces. Bye.